right across the table I have Ian Rowland. Hello. Can you just uh, give me uh, the elevator pitch, who you are and what you have done? You are a magician, first of all. Well, um, I, I'm a writer and entertainer and performer. I'm based in London, or near London in England. Uh, and I, I love traveling uh, more than anything. And I am lucky enough to do various bits of work that enable me to travel and see the world and visit interesting places, such as Finland. Mm -hmm. You did a lecture now today with the, uh, had to do with card magic, first of all. Then you're going yeah. to do your mentalist act tonight. Um, that's right. Uh, this morning's lecture at the convention, uh, they said they would let me do one on card magic. This is a first. Never happened really? before. <laughs> okay. No one else, no other convention organizer has been willing to take the risk of unleashing me <laughs> on an audience that wants to learn about card magic. This is the first time ever. So that's going to look good. And it went okay, didn't it? You were yeah, there. It went, there. It went so well. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. Not too bad. No, no. And tonight... Um, I have a solo show in the main theater, so that's all kind of mentalism, or my weird kind of mind reading stuff. And uh, then tomorrow, I'm allowed to sleep, they, they, there's a gap in the middle, I'm allowed to go to bed and be horizontal and close my eyes and sleep, so that's mm -hmm. good. And then I, I, I can say to the viewers, uh, or the listeners, that it's very seldom that you sleep at a man. <laughs> not really. You're really, very little. Yeah. Um, it's not really, and then tomorrow, yeah, I do another lecture, which is the, the mentalism side. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. And, and a little bit about that, that's the reason why I wanted you to be uh, mm -hmm. a part of Skeptike Podden, as it's called right. in, in, uh -huh. in Swedish. Very hard to translate that uh, into English, skeptic, with a skeptical podcast, of course. Uh, first of all, um, two things. Uh, you are a mentalist, but you said you're a little bit different, you said? Yeah. Um, How, uh, what differs you from... Well, <laughs> mentalism... You read minds. M mentalism, <laughs> I mean, that's trade jargon within the magic world for mind reading kind of magic magic of the mind magic of the imagination now here's the point here's the fun thing the basic plot of i can read your mind that lasts that will keep you going for like three minutes mm -hmm. maximum oh think of something da, da, da. it was paris yeah uh, round of applause you can't keep doing that it gets even even if it's done in the most miraculous way in the world after three or four minutes, it's, yeah, okay, can we see something else now? Uh, so over the years, because I, I, I'm not trying to impress anyone, I'm trying to entertain them. If, if, nice, if people are nice enough to put on a coat, leave the TV, book a babysitter, come out, get on a bus or a train, come to the theater, pay their tickets, sit down in front of me, I think they deserve to be entertained. I want to give them a good night. Yeah. And I don't want a million repeats of, you're thinking of something, and now I know what it is, round of applause. Mm -hmm. That's, it, there's a limit to that plot. So I try to find lots of other things that fit the theme of magic of the mind and the imagination, which you'll see, which you'll see tonight. And most of, a lot of the growth of, of my work recently uh, was in the corporate arena. And this, we get onto magic as metaphor. Ma magic is a way of illustrating a point. And the main thing that I do um, when I'm not training, when I'm entertaining that kind of people, is a show called Anything is Possible, dot, 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 almost. Okay. Okay. And I, 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 I teach everybody, I don't know how it works in other languages, but in English that's kind of funny, and they like to learn this. I get the whole crowd say, anything is possible, almost. And they like the timing, they like the pause. And what I'm trying to do is, uh, the, the basic gist of it is that um, there's very often you meet problems in life and so if you tell yourself well I think this is impossible I'm not sure I can do this that's kind of defeatist and it's much nicer to realize you don't know what is possible and impossible you don't know you might kid yourself you know but you don't if I can stand here on this stage and if I can show you a lot of things that you would have bet your bottom dollar were impossible Will you go home tonight having realized you don't know what's possible and impossible? Okay, yeah, we will. You'll go home realizing anything is possible. Almost. almost. <laughs> and uh, so by the end of the show, they'll all be saying that in unison. So that gives me a, a latitude to do all kinds of stuff that's not mm. strictly speaking mentalism. But as I said, yeah, that takes you for three minutes and that plot's used up. So we do some weird stuff. <laughs> and and also, I mean, the reaction's so much better as well, you know. Um, it, it, so somebody's written some information or thought of something like, oh, hey, it's Paris, did a round of applause. 
But if you eat broken glass yeah. and you chew it and, and you, you do swallow that, it, yeah, I'm going to yeah, do it tonight. Yeah. yeah. When and it is don't real, try this at home. No, 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 don't no. try this at home. You'll kill yourself. Uh, but if you do, John's responsible, not me. <laughs> There's nothing to <laughs> do with me. me. Yeah, you're responsible. But you know, it's it's not a trick. It's real glass. It's yeah. all checked. You'll see the way I do the routine, and everyone knows you can't eat broken glass. You no. kill yourself. You get lacerations and everything. So everybody knows it's impossible. And then I do it. Okay. And the reaction. It's fun, but it's also very scary. And it's so much better, it's so yeah. much more fun. So I do lots and lots of things uh, cool. like that, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. But, but uh, one of the main reasons why I wanted to interview you for, for the Skeptical Podcast is, of course... Because no one else was available at this price. I exactly, know. <laughs> I that's the first thing. That's the first thing. <laughs> yeah. I happen to be here, yes. we've got an hour to kill <laughs> until the next interesting <laughs> thing happens. Exactly. So what can I do? You, you know, you, you're, you've already drunk more alcohol than your body weight, so that's not going to work. And you th I know, I'll grab an interview with this guy from England. Yeah, why and, not? You know, so, here you go. <laughs> The other reason <laughs> is that... Can I just point out to your listeners, sure. I'm actually doing this all in fluent Swedish, but you're using a translation yes. software gimmick yeah, exactly. to make it sound English. Yeah, it's an iPhone app. Yeah, I think everyone should know, I'm actually bothered to learn to do this in fluent Swedish, yeah. but it's just a little voice app changes it back to English. Exactly. I think exactly. people should know that. Yeah, okay. that's very good. That's and I love Sweden. I, I generally do. It's a great country. So. Yeah. Oh, you've been to Sweden, by the way. Yeah. We, we will come back to that in a little while. <laughs> why you have been to Sweden. Uh, but first of all, uh, the book. Full Facts of Cold Reader. <laughs> I know you don't like to talk about no, it I, that I much. No, I it's okay. So, um, in the skeptical world, uh, a lot of uh, skeptics have <laughs> read this book. And of course, because of the, the connection to no, mediums. No, no, but I, you, 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 no you, I disagree. A lot of people have bought it. And they haven't read it. I don't know if they've actually read it. Really? I think a lot of people own it. Okay. But I don't, I don't know. Yeah, um, my life features a fluke. In that, around about 1998, I, I, w I was just reading everything I could get a hold of on cold reading because it's a fascinating subject. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's very interesting. And I was, it's not that there was nothing around. There's plenty of stuff written about it. But it was all kind of tatty little booklets and small little yeah. leaflets and like photocopied stuff you had to get from America in the days before the internet. And, and what I started doing was... I was just compiling a little Word document on my computer of the best bits from each of these books, just so that I all have them in one place. And I was rewriting them and sort of trying to classify this, and it just grew and grew. And eventually, I, I had enough material for what I thought would be a book. And uh, I made like 50 copies, because I thought maybe a few friends <laughs> okay. in the magic and mentalism world might like to see my views on cold reading, yeah. having distilled all this information. I'm not mm -hmm. copying anything now, I'm distilling it. I've got this huge body of information and I'm just trying to classify it. Yeah. Um, so now we've sold about 25,000 copies wow. around the world to customers in more than 60 countries without any advertising, without any marketing, without spending a penny or a krona or a yeah. euro and advertising of any kind, all by word of mouth and by the kind yeah, of marketing exactly. techniques that I use. And uh, it just keeps on selling. I don't know who these people are. I don't know why anybody's I'm buying I'm one this. of them. Well, but you're, <laughs> but you're I had the, to look it up. No, I went to your uh, webpage, ianroland.com. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but you see, you're in the magic and mentalism yeah. community. What I mean is there's thousands of strange people out there. Normal people. Normal people <laughs> with, with, with lives <clears> and wives who are buying this book, and I don't know why. So, so how, how did you just, uh, what's the reason, why, why did you want to go into cold reading and make that into such I'll a... I'll tell you, no, I, so I, I have an... I mean, you're not one of those uh, hunting for uh, mediums and... Uh, no, 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 I, I, so I, I had an interest in magic when I was growing up, and I, I got into this field that we in the trade called mentalism, mind reading kind of magic. Uh, if people have seen Darren Brown on television, that kind of thing. Um, except, you know, I'm, I'm taller and I've got more hair. That's, that's the only difference. <laughs> and, um, but he's, he's very good. He's come on very well. And, um, <laughs> and I, I was learning about lots of different kinds of magic, you know, coin magic and rope magic and cards. And I came across this mind reading stuff. So I got into that. And one day my mentor, a, a very well-known uh, British advisor and writer and magician called David Britland, he uh, used to introduce me to a lot of stuff, and he introduced me to cold reading. I said, what's that? He said, well, you, 
people go along for a psychic reading, you give them a psychic reading and they give you money. And I said, what, what's the secret? How is it done? He said, well, that's actually it. You just talk to people and they give you money. And I said, but how do you know what to say? He said, well, you don't. You just make it up. <laughs> but they still believe it and they still give you money. So I, this was completely different to anything else in the magic world because everything else has the secret, the yeah. method, how it's done. And this one doesn't have anything. You just do it and people give you money and they're happy. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, this sounds good. People give you money <laughs> for talking. Hey, that's one thing you I can talk. do. I can yeah. talk. Yes. There, you know me well enough to know there's a list as long as my arm of stuff I can't do and that I'm no good at, but I can talk. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, another, can talk. Uh, an American uh, magician, uh, very well known in, in the magic field, Armando Lucero, he said uh, today at the you, lecture... You can't repeat that. Go on, I, you can if you want. You can if you I, want. In Sweden yeah. it's okay to oh. say that. He said his bullshit is better than his patter. I'm no, sorry, no, I'm, no. Yeah, what's You're going to have to revise that now. Wipe that. He, <laughs> <laughs> no. That's what, uh, no, how no, I heard no. it. No, no, no. He said, Ian's bullshit is better than most people's patter. Oh, really? Yes. I missed that one. Yes, okay. that's what he said. Most anyway. people's patter, okay. Uh, but still, still it's correct. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I got into it. That's why I was interested. And I started yeah. finding everything that I could on mm -hmm. this interesting subject. And as I, as I said before, it's, I mean, there were things around on it, but they weren't very good. They weren't very high quality. There weren't many materials on it. So I just... I just wanted to write my own. I just wanted to compile my own notes on this fascinating subject. But in order to do that, I had to get good at doing it. Yeah. So I started, now, I want to make this point clear, and I want it on the record, not for money. I didn't, I want, I didn't want to take anybody's money. So I would give readings, but I would just do readings. Uh, this is going back to my student days, my young adult days, okay. 20s and so on. Every opportunity I got to do a reading, I would do a reading. I was not taking anybody's money because I wasn't doing it to earn money. I, was do I, can, I can earn money by ripping people off in other ways. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> okay. I don't need this. Um, and I just wanted the practice. I wanted to know how to do this. How do you meet a complete stranger, mm -hmm. total stranger, and she sits, he or she sits down, and you can give them like a 20-minute reading, yeah. like 20 minutes of... of Totally improvised material about any aspect of their life. Yes. Every aspect of their life, any and every. How do you do this? And I wanted to get good enough to pass test conditions, okay. which I started doing for the media, uh, for the press, for TV, um, and and I did that. And I'm the only person who's done that. And that's that's when I started writing the book. Yeah. One point in the book, <clears throat> yeah, you explained this uh, that uh, which is very common is this, that you don't even have to be correct when you're no. doing cold reading. No. I mean, cold reading is uh, different, uh, I mean cold reading is just one word for so many different techniques yeah. that goes under cold reading, but I, you don't even have to be correct and still, I, no, no. I mean especially mediums, uh, psychics, they are using this just to rip people <laughs> off, so to speak. Well, that's, that's, a, that, that's, that's a, a verdict, uh, as a moral verdict. Um, yeah, it's very tough to say that, but, but sometimes we, we have some uh, uh, recorded uh, seances and, and stuff yeah. like that in our podcast, and, and we hear the same, the same uh, fishing for information and all the the, the Barnum effects, uh, mm -hmm. and Barnum statements and stu stuff like that, and, and shotgun techniques and stuff like that. It's it's, it's uh, incredible. And, and, yeah, you're absolutely right. You certainly don't need. You see, when people start learning cold reading, especially people from the magic world, mm -hmm. they're interested in hits. They're interested yeah. by which I mean. When you manage to make a statement and the, the person you're doing the reading for goes, oh yes, yes, that, I, I know exactly what you mean. Oh yes, that, that's what they're... Um... I would just receive some coffee, that's it. Yeah, that this is okay. so nice. Yeah, we need some coffee. We are at the magic convention, we need all the coffee we can get now because we never sleep. Thank <laughs> you, we will give you some money very soon. Um, yes. Um, John? Yeah, thank you, please. So, um, yeah, they're interested mm -hmm. in hits. They, yeah, they hits. want those marvelous moments. Because, you see, they're coming from a magic background where it's like, hey, uh, take a card, oh, it's lost in the deck. Yeah. I will now find the correct card. Magicians exactly. like that happy moment, that happy ending of getting something right. But you so, have to. I mean, if, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. if someone picks the uh, Ace of Hearts it's, and you produce uh, the Ten of Spades... It's not, not going to look very good, no, is it? No, 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 exactly. Although, strangely enough, that's how most of my card tricks do go. <laughs> um, so... So they come, you know, they want to learn cold reading, and I, I start teaching them, and they're obsessed with getting hits. They want yeah. to be able to make statements that are right. The point is this, when I'm cold reading, I don't care okay. if what I say is right or wrong. 
I don't care if it's a hit. It's nice if it is. That makes life kind of easy. But the point is, no matter what you say and no matter what the reaction, you still can win. Is you you always have what we call a revision or an out. And so, uh, the 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 crucial point is, even when you're wrong, you're still right. And and that's basically the essence of it. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to have this pretty broad repertoire at the back of your head of ways of taking a statement that's wrong but making it seem right and doing it fluently without any kind of conspicuous crunching of gears whilst you change direction. Mm -hmm. It's got to look smooth. It's got to look like that's what you meant all along. Um, so yeah, you're absolutely right. You don't, you don't need to be correct about anything. No, but, but it still the, works. When it comes to, to uh, psychics, for instance, well, when they probably, if we say that, probably are using cold reading, do you think that some of them use it they know exactly that they are using cold reading or do you know that some of them, or think that some of them might uh, do it without knowing uh, yeah you get you get, both kinds. you get you get you get the ones who are sincere yeah. but deluded and that they think they have a gift of some kind mm -hmm. and you get the others who know what they're doing yeah and they know that there's nothing actually of a psychic nature happening but they are nonetheless providing a reading and giving people something that they, they want. Um, so yeah, you get both kinds. Um, and you, I mean, you can never really tell which you're dealing with unless you're a genuine mind reader. You don't really know what's going on in somebody's mind mm -hmm. or somebody's heart, but yeah, you get both kinds. But if you go to your uh, web page, you also do corporate uh, seminars mm. for, for uh, salespeople yes. to use uh, cold reading. Right. Well. <clears throat> We, in that context as well. This, I mean, uh, that's a slightly different subject. So yeah. let's let's just draw two boxes. Yeah. Cold reading is in the context of the psychic industry. Yeah. You know, and you get some fake reader doing tarot readings or whatever. A few years ago, I developed a related subject, but a separate one called ACR in English, Applied Cold Reading. Hmm. Um, now what I did, I realized that in a business context, sales, management, negotiation, training, whatever, there are some related uh, techniques that we can put together that enable you to do things that are nothing to do with fortune telling and nothing to do with pretending to be psychic, but that, for example, might help management, might help sales, might help all kinds of things in the corporate world. And I teach ACR. I do not teach anyone cold reading. I don't teach people how to pretend to be psychic. I do teach people ACR, which is goes to my business background. I have a background in business, background in management, mm -hmm. and uh, in that world of work, there are some related techniques we can use, and that's ACR applied to cold reading, and that's what I teach. Yeah, fascinating, fascinating, absolutely. If someone would like to get hold of the book, where do they go? <laughs> um, this is a plug for you. you no, can no, plug there's, as much there's as lots of uh, free places you can download it for illegally. Uh, we don't want to go there. Yeah, of course no. you do. Uh, you're Sweden. You'd lead the world in <laughs> illegal. No, no. Well, you got the pirate bay. Yeah, you lead. You lead the world in illegal BitTorrent downloads. I know for a fact that everything I've ever written is available free from illegal pirate BitTorrent download websites. Um, I heard the other day that NASA in America are planning a voyage to Mars and I'm pretty sure that when those astronauts get out onto the surface of Mars the first thing they will see is a pirate copy of my book because it's everywhere really? it's, it really is I get so many in an average week I'll get like half my emails are from people wanting to buy stuff from me or hire me for a corporate talk or a corporate lecture and half my emails are from people saying do you know your books available for free pirate download off this illegal site on, okay yeah and I say, yeah, I do. It's everywhere. So you don't need to buy it. You can just rip me off. You can just buy it. You can just illegally download it for free. Uh, <laughs> okay. It'll probably be very badly scanned by some Korean guy. Nothing against Korea. It's a great country, but a yeah. lot of piracy takes but place. But bad scanners. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. <laughs> well, high quality, but bad scanning. Yeah. Um, so there's no need to... However... If we want if, to be. If, I mean... people, if people realize that I'm very poor... <laughs> okay. I don't know why you're like. It's not funny. I no, have no money. I but I do lots of good work for charities. I I help sick children and kittens mainly. If people think, you know, he probably deserves a little bit of money because he does all this work. He helps sick children and kittens. He's got no money. I'm going to buy a proper copy of his book. I'm going to be the one this year, right? 
if if they want to One do that, twenty four thousand. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's shh. Okay, sorry, it kind of ruins it a bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then they just go to my website and there's links. Okay. And and and, and the website is uh, ianroland.com. I couldn't really find a name that was more obvious than that. <laughs> Uh, roll on with a W. Yeah, I, I was, you know, I was going to call it the three juggling Wendy's, but I, my name's not Wendy. There's only one of me, and I don't do juggling, so okay. I scrapped that. I thought about it for a while, <laughs> but then you and then I thought, you know what? It's probably less confusing yeah. if I just go with ianroland.com. Mm -hmm. Did you think that works? Yeah, well, I, I think yeah. it. I think it has the advantage. Sure, I found it eventually. Yeah, so I bought uh, the book, and uh, <laughs> so people can give me money that way. That's the cool. other option, of course, is not to buy the book. But to send me the money anyway. That's even better. Just, just because some people just sometimes feel they want to give me yeah. money. And um, in Sweden, they usually send it first to me and then I send it. With, I, we I can do it that way. We can do it that 20 way. 20% commission. Um, and the other, uh, the other thing is very intelligent and accomplished, but also attractive women. Mm -hmm. They can have a free copy of the book anytime oh, they really? want. Okay. Uh, I don't judge women superficially. Women, of course shouldn't be judged and if they do they should be appreciated for their uh, accomplishments and intelligence <laughs> but if, if if they're very nice and mm -hmm. they want a free copy of the book any Swedish woman you have the most wonderful attractive stunning wonderful great women in the world and any Swedish woman can have the book anytime okay. they just need to ask but you know that because you have been to Sweden uh, yeah. a couple of times now it's fantastic and the reason why is of course uh, Phenomen the, the TV show with Phenomen U Uri, yes. Yeah, Phenomen yes U with, with my Uri pal Gallen. Uri yeah. yeah your pal Uri that's yeah, a kind friend. of interesting though because you are a skeptic so yes so and, and you, uh, your pal is Uri and you work with him now for, for this uh, phenomenon. I, I don't know if you work with the uh, mentalists or if you work with Uri only. Well, um, an important principle, right? Yeah. Um, friends can disagree and people who disagree about things can be friends. Okay. All right? I'm friends with James Randi. Mm -hmm. Everyone listening to this knows who James Randi is. Yes. I'm friends with James. I've, I've went over and did the amazing meeting. I performed in Las Vegas. I yeah. worked with James on various things. I, only a couple of years ago, I was out in Fort Lauderdale, spent the day, bought him lunch. You know, I, so I'm friends with Randy. I'm friends with Uri Geller. Okay. Um, I'm quite sure there were probably things uh, 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 in most of my friends' backgrounds that I don't necessarily agree with, but I can. You know, do I have a choice there? Am I going to be enemies? Does the world need more hate and conflict and antagonism in it? I don't think so. And if I can find a way to get along with people, I do. Now, I mean, take yourself as an yeah. example. You're a thoroughly disreputable man. You've done terrible things. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, you've committed two murders, even whilst you were here in Finland, just in the convention. But, you know, I can still be friends with you. I can still okay. get along. So I, I saw the way that you mugged that old lady yesterday. <laughs> uh, you saw that? Yeah, oh. I saw the violent acts you've been committing. Um, but oh, I still, the dog. You saw that? Oh, I saw sorry. that. And it was cruel. It was the vicious. Yeah. Uh, the kitten had done nothing. You mauled it to death. Yes. And ate it. So, yes. And still you want to do this interview. And I'm happy to do it. You know. yeah, but, uh, so, um, yes, I, uh, until about four or five years ago, uh, Mr. Geller uh, entertained the notion that I was some kind of, I don't know, enemy of his or I didn't like him. Yeah, he doesn't like oh, skeptics. Um, well, that's not true. He's happy to meet absolutely anybody. Really? Absolutely. I tried to and meet him. Yeah. No, no, no. He, he will. Mm -hmm. um, we managed to clear that misunderstanding up Good. through an intermediary and uh, we've become friends and mm -hmm. uh, I, I like him. Uh, I've hung out with him many times. I find him honest and I found him genuine and a good friend to have. And uh, he started, he's got this show, Phenomen, which yes. he sells around the world. And I sometimes have a very minor role, that, that's not me, me, me being modest, it is a minor role, as a consultant on that show. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's the Uri story. The Uri story, yeah. But, but still, uh, don't you think that uh, when you go out like Uri, now he tries to be a, he names himself a mystifier instead of a, a paranormal. Mm -hmm. but, but still, in Sweden, he did a lot of uh, radio shows that, that I didn't like. I went out and, mm -hmm. and, and totally went against him. Uh, yeah. Because I don't like this uh, giving people uh, the belief that there is a paranormal right. way to do th uh, things. And, and, and he goes out, and all the work we have been doing with, with the, this podcast, for instance, mm -hmm. I mean, and then people just, well, well but he's real. Uh, Uri, who can do yeah. that? Well, we have two two different people. Uh, some of them who are just knows that, well, he, well, his uh, lay, lay per, uh, persons yeah. they know that he is 
a magician. I said, well, why do you bother? Because he's just a magician like right. everybody else. I said, no, 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 not quite. <laughs> because, right. And then we have this, uh, the, the other one, the, 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 the other people who, who really are dead sure that this is mm. the proof for para, that there is yeah. a paranormal. I mean, for, for instance, the Stanford Research Institute mm -hmm. uh, the test if we say that with mm -hmm. bunny ears yeah. <laughs> and so on mm -hmm. and, and, and they still use it today as, as a proof that paranormal uh, things exist yeah they do I, yeah. I, I mean it's there anybody can go and check um, uh, was it Nature magazine or yeah Nature uh, yeah. Uh, 1974 I think it's a published scientific paper saying yeah. there was evidence Mild evidence, but some evidence of genuine telepathic powers. It's there. It's there in black and white. No, but the, that was uh, Putov and Torg's uh, yes. uh, article. Yes. But, but it was uh, th there was also a uh, uh, one and a half page from Nature that they didn't. Uh, dis they they, didn't they, they agree said they, they they were publishing it with some reservations. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. And then people tend to forget that. Mm -hmm. But, but how do you see that? I mean, you, you never. Talk with Uri about that. I, I've talked with Uri probably about everything under the sun. I okay, mean, the really? last, the last, yeah. yeah. The, I mean, the last time we chatted, we were, we were discussing Biff Rydberg. Okay, Biff which, Rydberg. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, can you say it again for me? Biff Rydberg. Because I loved that. I'd never yeah, had it before. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's gorgeous. So yeah. we were having a chat about that. Um, yeah. I, I mean, nothing's off limits, and we talk about stuff. As I said before, it. it uh, we all know that. His career has always been controversial. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have any problem with that. No, I know. Controversy is good for yes. business. Of course. Um, when you get into this debate about what people believe and what you're encouraging them to believe, of course there are, if you line up a thousand people, you get a thousand different opinions. Sure. Even in the skeptic community, there's, there's not necessarily a big consensus about exactly where the ethical lines are drawn. There certainly isn't. In the world of magic and mentalism, you get every shade of opinion mm -hmm. from this is terrible, this is misrepresenting magic, it <laughs> shouldn't be happening, to people saying, go for it, hey, you know, he, he yeah. owns, if, if you can earn several million dollars doing this, good mm -hmm. luck to him, you know. So that, of course, there's many different shades of opinion, and as I said, uh, it's, it's not an endorsement. I'm not necessarily saying, hey, I agree with everything he's ever said and done, no. but I probably, to be honest, with most of my friends. I probably don't agree with everything they've ever said or done. Even my friends probably don't agree with everything Ian Rowland's ever said and done. You know, it's not about total endorsement and total freedom. What I am saying is, uh, first of all, I think people should, re a good principle, reserve your judgment until you actually get to know someone. Because mm -hmm. you can't judge them through what you see in the media, what you've heard secondhand, what you see on a website. Wait until you get to know someone. And I've gotten to know him I work with him, I find him honest, I find him thoroughly trustworthy, I find him pleasant and good fun to hang out with, generous, very helpful, always, or he's done me a lot of good favors over the okay. years, and that's the man he is, that's the man I know. Oh, I'm really happy to hear that, that's <laughs> actually, the, yeah. That's the man I know. Because the only th uh, way I can judge him is, of course, what he is saying, what the general audience sees of him. When he goes out and says, well, there is paranormal. But, but I mean, there again, if we want to be good skeptics and, and rational thinkers, uh, a distinction that's sometimes not made is the distinction between what he himself has said yeah. and what people have written or said about, about him, him or yes. on his behalf. And very often... Uh, but he never disagrees. Well, hang on, hang on. Yeah, so okay. very, often, very often when people put a certain point to me, yeah. oh, but what about when he claimed this? What about when he said that? When you actually go back to first sources, he didn't. Someone who was writing about him said this line or made this claim or whatever. Okay. So, unless you're going to suddenly say that, uh, you know, it's his business to correct the work of 10,000 journalists mm -hmm. who've written 10,000 articles about him in every magazine under the sun, I don't think you can necessarily hold a human being to account for everything that's written about them. Um, in that's terms true. of what Uri himself says, for example, very often when he's being interviewed, and very often these days, by the way, when he's doing interviews, they're not on this track of, are you psychic, are you not? They want to talk about his home or his crystal collection <laughs> or his jewelry or his TV show. It, 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 there's a lot of things to talk about. He's an interesting guy who's been around. Mm -hmm. But very often when, when this point comes up, what Uri says is this. He says, what I do is real. Yeah. Now that is an accurate statement of fact. Okay. The only debate is what it is he does. Yeah, of course. 
Um, so, you know, as I, I'm not trying, it's not my role to defend Uri, and he can speak for himself. He doesn't, I'm not a spokesman, and he's a friend of mine. He can talk to him, talk, speak mm-hmm. for himself. You could go and do a podcast with him. Yeah. And also, I'm not on trial. I'm not a, nobody's no, of judge and jury me. I'm, I'm saying, I know him. He's not my friend. I like him. I work with him, mm. and I find him a good person to work with. And I could say exactly the same about James Randi. I could say exactly the same about Michael Shermer, mm-hmm. Skeptic Magazine. Yeah. I've done I've done shows for him. Uh, I contributed to the magazine. I think what I think he's a great man. I think his magazine is a great magazine. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's not it's not a case of uh, trying to ally myself with with the bad person. No, no. But if you want to see, look into the future as a skeptic, what, what, what do you think we have to do? Do we have to educate the masses, so to speak? Do you, uh, let them know more about cold reading and then make them uh, think more rational about you know, how mediums and psychics work and, uh, and so on? Or uh, What should we do? I don't know what you should do. I don't know what anybody should do. I think, I think coming to someone like me for advice or guidance about what should and ought to be done is a very, very poor choice. Uh, I, I'm not. Partic- I'm trying to pitch a book. No, no, but I, I, I'm not. You know, I'm. I'm no source of wisdom. I'm not a guru. Uh, anybody who you know wants to debate or oh, how we should be doing things and what should we do, hmm. I think there are probably a million better people to go and interview than me. I'm a guy who knows how to mess with people's minds on stage, and I'm a reasonably good corporate trainer. Um, because I've, you know, I've taught people like the FBI and so forth. So I know quite a little about the psychology of the mind and, and productive things you can do with it. That's me. That's, that, that's, that's, that's my skill set done. Yeah. In terms of you know, how we should be educating people, ought we to be doing this, how do you pro, pro, uh, yeah. promote the skeptical message, I don't know. There's, I, talk to Michael Sherman. I think he's the best guy no, we've good, got. Yeah. He has, he's a brilliant man. He's produced this brilliant magazine. He does fantastic media work. <laughs> He's written fantastic books. You know, he's the kind of thinker that you need to actually plot the way forward, not me. I mean, I, I'm. <laughs> I, I was you know, thinking I'm, I'm, that I, since you know a little no, bit about No, but I mean, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm nobody's see. sense of a like strong thinker. Mm. I. I wonder whether there is a way. You see, mm. information about you know the truth about astrology, the truth about cold reading. All this has been around. It's yeah. been around for a century, and it's it's more accessible now than it's ever been because everything's more accessible than it's yeah. ever been. We've got the internet now, and anybody can Google, you know, cold reading. Anybody can find out Skeptics Dictionary and all these other sites. It's not that the information's not out there, but from a lot of people, just don't want it. A don't lot of a lot of the normal lay public just they they want to believe, and they find some comfort or something positive in it. Now that's not a good thing. Mm. A lot of people find comfort in, in religion and I really don't like religion. But that's just me. That's just my opinion. Um, so I don't think it's a case of access to information. The information is already out there. And it's already out there in very easily absorbed form. There's some great writers out there um, doing great stuff to promote a skeptical message. The point is whether people want it. And the point is whether something is taken away that you need to replace, because emotionally there is. Yeah. A lot of people are invested in their belief in the paranormal and psychics and things because they get something comforting from it and they get something positive out of it. And if you want to take that away, you have to put something in its place. You have to say, don't worry that astrology is total nonsense, utter, utter nonsense. Mm-hmm. Don't worry because I understand you get a sense of guidance and, and, and destiny from it. There are other ways of getting that, other ones that actually work. You know, that might be nice. So I think if you want to take something away from somebody, you have to give something back. And I think sometimes maybe, uh, you know, this, this, is, this is my pathetic attempt to try and be wise and it's not very good. But <laughs> if maybe sometimes what happens with the skeptical message is it's perceived incorrectly, but it is perceived as taking something away. And, and people obviously aren't going to respond well to that. Uh, you know, you're trying to take away their comfort blanket. Mm-hmm. You understand comfort? Yeah, 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 sure. And if you, that's not going to go down very well. But if you, if you say, yeah, the comfort blanket's fine. We can actually give you something better. Would you be interested? And they, oh, okay. And and then you can kind of make it fun and 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 get something across to people that they don't get a sense of you're taking something away. Whatever comfort and sense of purpose or whatever, it's still there. 
but now it's actually based on something that works. It's something real, you know, as opposed to something that doesn't. Beautiful. Thank you, Ian. I am, uh, but let's talk about the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Thank you very much. Um, is there? A, can I just before you? Is sure. there a reason why you insisted on us doing this naked? Could we not have done this wearing clothes? Why? Why we sat here in this bar? The not reason is anything, because is we it? are in Finland now, and in Finland ah. we use sauna, you know. So now we have to go to a sauna, and for that you have to be naked. I, I, yeah. It's not that I mind. Don't, no, I I'm know, not I prudish, know. but it's not the, really the English way of doing an interview. We normally have clothes on. I would normally have a yes. you know, jacket and tie. I know, I know. And I just feel a little self-conscious yeah. sitting here naked. Although, as you can see, I've got absolutely should... nothing to be ashamed of. No. Nothing at all. <laughs> no, not at all. And uh, I do. That's why I'm, I'm uh, having a cushion in my lap. That, yeah. yeah. I, I noticed the, the yeah. rather embarrassing use of the cushion. Yeah. As you can see, no cushion. No. And <laughs> not many cushions would be adequate yeah. anyway. Exactly. Uh, but we'll leave it on that note. Yeah, and, and people, uh, have people they, they, around us just, uh, they don't notice us. At well, all. a few women have looked. Yeah, to no, be honest. No, and, but who can blame them? A few men as well. They're not often going to see a body like this. <laughs> and I, I, uh, I, anyway, if there's anybody listening to this who can contrive other good reasons and excuses for me to come back to Sweden, please get in touch. It's a fantastic country. It's one of the finest countries in the world. And I, I'm always looking for opportunities and excuses to come back and, and see are, more. Are, of are it. you coming back? Yeah. I'd love to. I, I, I don't have any more involvement with phenomen. Phenomen? No. Um, okay. Mind reading for the masses. But I mean, any other excuse or do some magic stuff or yeah. do some a, a lecture or a show, you know, please think of reasons for me to come back because I love Sweden and I love Swedish people and you're all great and I want to see more of you as soon as I can. Wonderful. Thank, thank you, Ian Rowland. No, thank thank you, you very much. Thank, thank you. you. I'm going to put some clothes on now. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs>